is really our icon, little camper, little split screen camper. Can you imagine when Volkswagen produced these, whether they thought it would be as iconic and, and this little girl's 50 year old. We are working on it, so it's, it's, in, it's absolutely in bloody bits in the back, but call her Nana. Um, like I say, if you want to see more of Nana, sub, hit that subscribe button and you'll see how we develop her later on. But what we've got to work with today is the new Volkswagen ID Buzz. Um, and I just, you can almost say that's going to be the next split screen camper, can't you? That's 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 going to be the classic camper van for us grandkids. Uh, I'm delighted to be working on this today. I um, want to be showing you how to fit a seat in the back of there. Uh, a lot of people step away from these vehicles because obviously they are electric. And normally speaking, I would step away from them, even though I'm experiencing fitting van seats. Um, but I do know, because I've seen a bit of a video, the customer, Martin Knight, thank you very much for letting me work on your van today, Martin, is he showed me a video where we have an inverted subframe on, the, on this front half, and then your battery pack is your conventional kind of van floor there. So I know between these two seat books, I've got some structure. And on the video look like a captive note so i'm fairly convinced i can get my rear mounts of my seat onto something structural there and then bridge and grab hold of that inverted uh, subframe here somewhere but watch this space okay so what we've done here is the that seat leg is where we're guessing the rear mount's going to be between the two seat posts the front mount we were looking to be looking for is going to be there that says mark this is a reference point it's 600 mil from the front of the board we've had to whip the bulkhead out so we can get a true measurement off the edge of the board rather than it being just roughly somewhere in there so it's that is 600 mil exactly and we've done it exactly the same at that side so now with these bits of tape we've got about markings we've got a reference point we're going to try to do one or two ways to find drill these holes for this board into the mounting points below wants to measure off that that reference point so we can literally link together and the other one is going to be is from some sharp spikes and try tapping the board to mark the board on the underside <laughs> this is the culprit this is the fool who thought he could put reference points on plastic trims that were taking off that were taking off <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, the fool's mate went along with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty good idea. so we're just putting some random kind of little dot to kind of, if we need them, we can drop in the spiky sort of like clouded technique is going to work for us. But like I said, we've got a bit of a boo boo moment, but there you go. So the floor's out now. Um, it's quite stuck down in places, so it doesn't just lift up. Um, you will notice all the trim, literally all that's, it's kind of pinning it down and then it's bonded in place as that floor. Um, so just come on, now this, this is, it's not the same photo or the video I watched earlier, all this kind of was, were, were removed, which was showing me that inverted floor down there. What's been a bit of a curveball now is, there's a clear difference in height between the original floor here and that there. I'm going to put a straighter as they just give an indication on depth, that's 110 mil. And to confirm, we can wind a M10 bolt into the captive nuts, which is on the reinforced bit of floor. So we just need to do something now to, to lift it up and brace it stronger to ride from mounting point there across to the structural mounting point there. Right, so next stage. There's a bar we need to put across here, it's going to have like some sort of framework up to, to carry the, the seats on. So the floor's reinforced, we're happy with that, but whatever comes up here and bridges across needs to be quite substantial. So there's going to be a bracket there, bracket there, and a bar coming across the top. So just to get the centres, I've put this threaded bar in, I've spun a nut down to pack it nice and tight so there's not a lot of movement on it. And I'm physically going to measure from centre to centre and I'll do it on all three to make sure they are all the same and then we know where we're drilling on the the bar that's going to carry the seats on. The floor's now back in. We've left some bolts protruding, I'll show you shortly. And the idea is I've got the floor up nice and tight to where it used to be to the bulkhead. 
it's kind of square best it's gonna be it's resting very gently on top of some bolts some bolts poking upwards um, what we're going to do now is give it a bit of a smack with a soft hammer and that should put some indentations on the underside which is going to tell us where to drill through where we can put the seat on now Floor's upside down now and you can see we've got these indentations so that's them we're going to be bolting through for the seat legs just to show you what we did we put some a bit of studded barge poking up above the bolt heads get it a clout with that hammer and it indentated so we know to drill through now so there we have his front seats matching trim and there we have his rear seats well, they're there captive um, M10 8.8 10 cell strength bolts, it's holding them down so and they're bolting down onto the seal subframe put beneath this floor which then bolts onto the reinforced parts of the van floor which is why the legs are a bit unsymmetrical um, but yeah, there we go three seater bench seat in a VW bus So, we've recently fitted some seats in the back of an electric VW ID bus. Um, Normally speaking, we don't really get involved in customer installations and things like that, but this one was uh, a challenge. Um, this, the customer um, were having difficulty finding a converter to fit seats in the back of his van. Um, well, we're quite experienced in the industry, so we, we took the challenge on. The what were concerning a lot of converters is the, is the belief they have to physically drill all the way through that van floor with a battery pack beneath it and obviously they damage that battery pack, they damage the vehicle, they could even bloody kill themselves so a lot of converters are walking away from these type of van conversions um, but here's our experience on it um, vans are usually created to be multi-purpose kind of vehicles literally from an empty van to carry pallets of bricks about to being a minibus now, in the past, a normal petrol driven vehicle, for argument's sake, there would be no facilities in the back of the vehicle to bolt the seat down. You just physically drill your holes, plug them where you want. Uh, with an electric vehicle, they ask to have them provisions already there because you know, you're not going to be drilling a bolt through, you know, because you've got the electric pack there. So, the, the vehicle manufacturers, if they do produce a minibus or a people carry type of the vehicle on an electric platform, you probably would find you'd have some reinforced points in the van floor as well as the seat belt the anchor points on these the C posts and D posts etc um, where you can physically just bolt to all these things you're not, you're not physically drilling all the way through so what we've done is we've created a subframe that bolts onto the reinforced points that were underneath the floor on this ID bus which physically took out a false floor uh, put some uh, reinforced brackets there but picked up on the reinforced mounting points of the floor and then the, the, the this has got timber floor put the timber floor back over and then we put, we bolted our seat down as you'd imagine it to be done so if you're interested in this conversion this is a Volkswagen ID buzz um, we are going to be producing the brackets where you can purchase these from so there'll be a link in the description where you can get the brackets from and there's also a link to the seat that we used um, we actually trim match it to the ID buzz as well, so they just look like the, the factory fits. Um, and like I so said, they had a crash tested seat, they're an M1 crash tested seat, got the seat belts on it, you're good to go. Um, so literally, we'll be pull out the, the false floor, bolt these brackets down, put the seat in situ, bolt it back down again. It really is a simple conversion. And the same would be really for any particular uh, electric vehicle. There should be, if you've got them mounting points there, you can physically concoct something up to bolt an aftermarket seat to. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please hit that subscribe button because it it helps us to keep creating videos like this to help people along the way. Um, like I say, it's, it's one click for you on a mouse. It helps us and other people to get this information. Um, in this early part, I did show you the Volkswagen uh, split screen when we're converting. Um, we're not really going to go and do a full in-depth 
video on that but nevertheless we will like to show you once it's done it because we are going to do something a little bit unusual with it um so it'd be nice like to show people what we've done with it and a bit of a talk through on that conversion so if you're interested in that hit that notification button as well and and obviously when we do upload that you'll get a notification and you can have a look at that conversion as well thanks for watching